Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I had a very different video planned and was gonna talk about sort of updates and Dylan and the school and all that kind of thing. And I decided I'm not gonna do that kind of video today because I don't know if you remember, a couple of weeks ago, we brought out a video on Dylan's sort of milestones. So when he started speaking, um, all the good bits, the happy bits, the you know bits that brings tears to your eyes and a video that I wanted to put out there to give hope, positivity to other parents who are in the middle of a diagnosis right now, who are really struggling, to show them that there is light at the end of the tunnel, to show them that it's not all badness and tears and tantrums and there's also fantastic, wonderful, happy bits as well. If you've been following me for a while now, you know the whole reason why I did this channel is to give hope, is to give help to parents, to try and give practical tips from what I've learned along the way, to show you my good bits and my bad bits. But recently I've been getting a lot of kind of comments saying, he doesn't look autistic. Ah! I don't know about you, but this comment drives me crazy. He doesn't look autistic. Okay, can someone please tell me what autistic looks like? Because clearly I'm missing a trick here. Oh, no, he doesn't look autistic because there is no look to be autistic. Autism is not a disease. It's not a disorder. It's a condition. The brain is wired differently. It works differently. In layman's terms, the brain just works a bit differently. We're all wired differently. So no, there is no autistic look. And I think what why I'm so kind of irked today is that people have been saying like, just a few people, not a lot of people, but like, oh, he doesn't look autistic. Almost like I'm pretending that I have a child with autism. Do I show the tantrums? No. Again, if you've been following for a while, you know I don't show the tantrums because I don't think that's fair. You guys deal with this anyway. You know, I don't need to show the fact that I've got bruises on a on my hand from a bad night when I tried to stop him hurting himself. Oh, by the way, broke my nose on the weekend because he got overzealous and jumped off a swing and dumped on top of me. You know, wheeze on the floor, still doesn't sleep. There, there are so many things I could go into, but that is not beneficial for you guys. And also it's, you guys deal with that. I'm here because I want you guys to tune in to me and be like, you know what? We need to see the good side of this too because everyone can get so focused on the negative. And I think, you know, this is what I noticed when, when Dylan was first diagnosed, when I went to mother's groups, you know, yes, it's good to cry with each other, to be open with each other, but also we need to raise each other up. We cannot stay in this constant state of negativity and doom and gloom because I for one do not want to live my life be feeling sad the whole time. And yes, autism is not easy. Anyone who says it is, is lying. And I'm not gonna sit here and pretend it's all roses and rainbows, because we know it's not. But I think you guys know that it's difficult for me to. And I have obviously spoken about it. I just don't choose to show it. So when someone comments and says, oh, he looks normal, he doesn't look autistic, it drives me crazy. So, on the other subject of phrases that we don't like, I thought I would talk about some of the other phrases that I hate when people say it, and I'm sure you guys can relate. He's just naughty. Oh, oh, doesn't that make you crazy? He's just naughty. She's just acting up. She obviously doesn't have parents who discipline her. You're being too soft on him. You need to have more discipline for him. Oh my gosh. If only the outside world knew what it was like for us inside here. I get told this quite a lot from people close to me, you know, should be harder on him, especially in the early days. You're in the middle of a diagnosis. It's been really hard for you and you try and reach out to your family, your wider family. And really there's no way they can understand because they're not there at two in the morning when your child's screaming and you're crying and you're trying to figure this out. And they only see, I guess, the good bits of your child sometimes. And if they see the, the bad bits, they're thinking, oh, well, you just need to discipline him more. Why aren't you, you know, he's just being naughty. And I think sometimes this is your family's way of maybe denial. Maybe they don't want to think about it. Another thing that irked me as we're on the irking this is, oh, don't worry, he'll be fine. Oh, don't worry, it's fine. Because in that moment, sometimes you just don't want to be told it's going to be fine. Sometimes you just want someone to say to you, I understand. I understand or this must be hard for you. Like acknowledge our feelings. 
you know so if you are a family of someone whose daughter or son or cousin has a child with autism please don't tell them it's going to be okay and don't worry about it and you know i know you think you're probably helping and my family have said this to me too trying to make me you know g up but sometimes in that moment you just want someone to give you a hug and say this is bloody hard and we're here for you that's all you need I, i'm hoping now with more autism acceptance in the world people are generally more understanding and think you know what maybe this this child is is just struggling maybe we should give them some space maybe we should give the parents a break or maybe ask the parents how they can how we can help them you know maybe they should say you know can i help with the other children can i help pick up your bag on the floor just don't give us those stares you know and that's really hard because us as parents try our best and we try and live you know as a normal life as possible like going out to you know restaurants and cafes and you know special occasions and more often than not we don't do that we don't go out to restaurants if we do um you know i do have to do things like phone ahead tell them i have a child with autism ask for maybe a quieter part in the restaurant make everybody aware and usually our dinners last 20 minutes it's like forget about you know, let's just go straight to dessert. You know, let's forget about the start and the main. We'll take dessert and then we'll go. Um, just to give the other kids that experience as well, because for Dylan, it's it's not nice. And then, you know, it's hard because if I leave Dylan at home, when I'm out without him and I'm with the other kids, I have terrible guilt. You know, I'm thinking, oh, I wish he was with me. I wish he was with me. But, you know, we make up for it in other ways. So, this week we had quite a few wins. He um, was a bit anxious at school and his wonderful teacher, Mr. Davies, was like, you know what, just take the day off and come back tomorrow feeling better. So we did. And on that day off, I got him on his bike and we ended up going for a little bike ride, which we haven't done in about maybe like over a year now, over a year and a half, something like that. Um, so that was a huge win for us. And yes, I want to show you these Bits. I want to show you our wins. I want to show you the happiness because you guys need to see that. Going back to not showing the bad bits and the meltdowns because you guys don't need to see that. I'll tell you about them. I'll tell you how I feel about them. But quite frankly, you don't need to see them. And I also feel like I don't need to, I probably am doing it in this video, aren't I? I sometimes feel the need to like justify Dylan's actions or I need to justify that just because I'm showing happy bits that I do also struggle. You know, I don't have it all happy and I don't have it all figured out. We have our challenges and, you know, Dylan's broken my nose twice now, I think. Once when he was little and it was an overzealous kiss. The problem that I have at the moment is Dylan is getting really tall, really big, and he still is quite immature and he is still very emotionally immature. So he's, you know, emotionally probably that of like five or six and he's very attached to me and he still wants to be held the same way I held him and yeah this sometimes results in a broken nose which you can see there I've got quite a bit of makeup to cover up the dark circles under my eyes but you know that's just part of life you know could have been Luca or Nia it wasn't just because he's got autism but um it is tough sometimes and maybe I don't say that enough um but these comments just yeah, you know, I'm rambling. Sometimes just being heard and understood is all us parents need. Um, anyway, I don't think there's much else to report. I just felt like having a bit of rant this week. The video I was gonna do has come totally out the window um, because I just got sick of some of these comments, which I'm sure you guys completely understand because I'm sure you get this all the time too. And yeah, I'd love to hear what, what annoys you. What, what comments annoy you that people say to you? We'll just get it all off our chest this week, shall we? Should we have a therapy session of things that make us angry? <laughs> because I want you guys to know that I see you, I hear you, I know how hard this is. I'm in it with you. I'm, I'm right there in the thick of it with you. And I know I tend to show the happy bits and the good bits, but I do understand the bad bits too. And we have them quite frequently. But for now, I'm gonna share with you our wins for this week, which was going on a bike ride. We got him to go to the house and he was swinging on the swing, which is where he ended up breaking my nose. Um, I'll share that funny video with you. Or maybe not so funny. <laughs> yeah.
that's it for this week guys and um like always thank you for watching sorry for ranting and getting it all off my chest but i feel so much better now you guys who make those comments please be a bit more mindful that sometimes just because we put on a happy face that we're not always happy and that we do not struggle uh, next week we are very excited we are going to be filming our christmas toy special and talking about all the toys and stocking fillers that we love and that we recommend for your little ones because i know how hard it is to try and find toys that our kids will like especially if they're not really into toys and playing so um that's coming up next week and i guess we'll see you then so have a good week and talk to you later bye i'm just getting through some comments replying to people and basically just doing some brainstorming for some videos for our YouTube channel next year. I was wondering if I have any followers who are autistic adults that maybe got a diagnosis in their later years. Um, I'd really like to know, would you like to be interviewed by me? What it felt like um, when you were a child? What it felt like when you got your diagnosis as an adult? Did you feel relief? Did you feel anger i think it would help so many people out there because i'm just looking through my comments and i have so many sort of adults who are coming to my channel to find answers to see if they can recognize some traits i have a lot of um, adults trying to self-diagnose because they're trying to get a diagnosis themselves and i guess you know we shared andrew's story recently of his adhd diagnosis and he only got diagnosed in his 40s and he spent many years feeling confused and why he felt that way and why his brain worked a bit differently and it gave him a lot of relief getting a diagnosis as an adult um but yeah so i was wondering is there anyone out there who would like to be interviewed by me on what it felt like have you got a diagnosis um recently or are you waiting a diagnosis i think we'd quite like to interview a few people maybe someone waiting a diagnosis someone who thinks they've got autism and someone who's just been diagnosed so if you are interested please do um, message me. As a mum, I was gonna say, I find it hugely helpful and interesting to talk to someone on the spectrum because it gives me a better insight into my son's brain and how I can help him. And I think we've come on so far, like Dylan got diagnosed nine years ago now. And back then there was like no help. And that's why I set up my channel to help other parents because I felt so lonely and so isolated and so lost. But now in 10 years, there's been so much more acceptance and we still have so far to go. Olivia, the lovely girl that I interviewed last year told me a startling statistic that I think it's like 75% or 80% of people on the spectrum can't find jobs. Why? That's just crazy to me. So I would really, again, I'd love to chat to someone on the spectrum who's an adult on how you find it finding jobs and how we can how we can make this world a better place and more accepting make the job place more accepting you know we have one in 54 children have autism in the uk at the moment these children are going to become adults and these children these young adults are going to want to find jobs they're going to want to you know, to be able to support themselves and we need to be able to support them to get those jobs. We need to reach out to more companies. These companies need to have more programs. Oh, I get so passionate about this project, about uh, this project, uh, about this subject. Um, and it's something I really want to delve into more in my videos next year. So after a very rambling long message, have a great day. And if you'd like to chat to me about any of these subjects, message me and, um, yeah, I love getting this conversation started. I love tackling hard subjects because by tackling these hard subjects, we make the world a better place for our kiddos. And that is what I am all about. Anyway, I'm going to make a cup of tea. Have a great day. Bye.